Welcome to Second Take, the show that takes a look at the issues behind the news. President Jacob Zuma met with both the National Planning Commission and the Presidential Infrastructure Coordinating Commission this week. Terence Creamer joins me to discuss some of the key messages that emerged. Hi Terence. There has been much uncertainty about the future of the National Development Plan um, following criticism, especially from within the governing alliance. What was the President's comment on that? Yes, he came out quite firmly yesterday that uh, just because there's criticism and debate around the plan, we shouldn't interpret that as an overwhelming rejection, was his words, of the plan. In fact, he said that there had been an overwhelming acceptance of the plan across society and that uh, the plan had been canvassed quite broadly by the National Planning Commission. It was published in August last year and they've gone on road shows and talked to civil society, to NGO groups, to business and others. And, and generally there is a, quite a, a large group of people, of South Africans, that are aligning their planning, not only in government, but uh, outside of government, to the National Development Plan and are excited about a lot of the content. But there is also a very powerful uh, uh, group within the governing alliance, mostly centered around Kasatu, but also the South African Communist Party that have some misgivings around the plan. And therefore that people have been saying, well, if there's such division around the plan, you know, what, I what certainty has really uh, been brought to the policy debate by the plan? And has it become a non-starter? And I think uh, President Jacob Zuma, and he was flanked yesterday at the press conference, or this week at the press conference, by uh, Sir Robert Poza, the Deputy um, the Chair of the National Planning Commission, and uh, Trevor Manuel, the Chair of the Planning Commission, two senior people, um, uh, one within government, one within the, the governing party, to say that no, the plan is not a non-starter, and actually the focus now is not on perf totally uh, having a perf perfect plan, but um, moving towards implementation um, and uh, I think th that was quite an important message because I think uh, outside of uh, government and also outside inside South Africa but also in the rest of the world there's a there's a clamor for some certainty around the direction South Africa is taking. Also emphasize this the fact that the plan is not a static document. Do you think there is enough room for adaptation and consensus building? I think that was also a key point made by uh, Minister Trevor Manuel in the sense that he says there's never going to be a cataclysmic moment where we now have this perfect plan and we move into full implementation phase. There's going, there is, there's, it's a, it's a, planning is by its very nature, you know, you have to adapt to changing circumstances, you have to adapt to changes of the information flow. As new information comes in, it changes the way you think about certain things. And therefore, to hold up the National Development Plan, as some have tried to do, as that is the static plan and we're not going to do uh, anything outside of what the plan might uh, allude to, whether it be on uh, the way we approach our foreign relations or whether it be the way we approach uh, power generation, whether we should have nuclear in the mix. Um, that's not how the plan is going to be used. It's going to be, uh, I suppose, used as a way to hold up the objectives and the visions for really creating a lot of jobs uh, between now and 2030, 11 million jobs, which would take our unemployment rate right down uh, to around the 6% level. And that's a very big uh, aspiration and goal. And then the, the uh, and really there's, uh, there's scope for adaptation and conversation and where better ideas come into the mix you know, th there's not going to be a foreclosure just because something uh, has been put down on the page. But the real issue that President Zuma uh, um, emphasised that we really need to focus on implementation. You know, the, the fact that we have poverty, inequality and unemployment, you know, as this overwhelming reality has to be addressed and has to be addressed with some urgency. And the National Development Plan is an is a important tool, uh, even if there's going to be adaptation around the way we actually implement um, and there's going to be conversations around it. It's an important tool, a vision document. In fact, I think it's emerging something as an umbrella document rather than a plan for a lot of the activities within government. And I think the really important uh, next phase is the medium term uh, framework, uh, strategy, strategic framework of government. And that's where things are going to be uh, more consolidated and solidified 
in terms of how we're going to be approaching dealing with that triple, triple scourge of poverty, inequality and unemployment. A key part of the NEP's vision relates to the gap, closing the gap that prevails in uh, the delivery of social and economic infrastructure. Did the PICC meeting shed any light on progress in that area? Yes, it was uh, uh, a long meeting. It, uh, you know, that council of the PRCC, the Presidential Infrastructure Coordinating Commission, meets regularly, and one of its regular meetings was was uh, uh, in the union buildings this week, and that really is where uh, President Zuma really chairs that commission. But he has a lot of his ministers uh, from the cabinet that are directly involved with the infrastructure program. He also draws in all the premiers from around the country and he draws in the executive mayors from the metropolitan councils and then Salga representing the other local governments and municipalities. So it was a big gathering and it was a long meeting. There was a presentation of over an hour and a half that was delivered on the PRCC as it currently stands and how things are being delivered. That was delivered by Economic Development Minister Ibrahim, Ibrahim Patel. And that really, what, what was new is that they've developed what they call a, a, a comprehensive dashboard of, uh, which gives visibility across the 18 strategic infrastructure projects or SIPs. And those SIPs already comprise um, hundreds of clusters of projects and about 1,100 individual construction sites. And they say that at active infrastructure projects that are currently on that dashboard, the, the value of that equates to 750 billion rand, um, and that there's over 178,000 people currently working on infrastructure projects across the country. So it's a bit of an eye opener because there's a lot of concern about you know whether the infrastructure program is actually happening, and we've actually seen um, PPC CEO Kitso Gordon this week calling for an infrastructure cadessa somewhere where that we can have better visibility and a proper conversation about how the private sector relates into this plan. So it was an eye opener that so much is happening and in fact he said over the period of the five year term that of this current <laughs> administration, uh, uh, 1.1 trillion rand will be spent on infrastructure which is quite a lot more than what was spent in the run up to the FIFA World Cup when we kind of considered this country a construction site. So there has been a scale up, but it hasn't been uh, felt as much as the construction industry and the private sector would have helped. And I think that's largely uh, attributed to the fact that, you know, while there's been this ramp up in public sector infrastructure spending, you know, the economic uh, equation in s for a private sector has become very blurry and a lot of growth projects have been taken off the radar and we haven't seen private sector investing particularly around the mining sector because we've had a lot of uh, a change in the environment in terms of the commodity cycle and uh, we've but we've also had a lot of uncertainty in that sector not least this labor uncertainty which is a f is not new but it's it's the current f issue of the moment but we've had other un uncertainties that have i think crimped uh, and un undermined uh, mining investment over the last f uh, few years and we've seen a f major fall off in private sector investment. So even though public sector is spending a lot and there are a lot of these construction sites, the visibility isn't there be and the, the base load that the private sector generally provides for infrastructure or investment in the economy isn't there. So it's not being felt as much as, as many had wanted. But I think that the message is that uh, implementation is really underway in this space and that there's plans for even more. And uh, it's going to be interesting because a 30-year project pipeline is going to be released in the next few months. But it's what is going to be, I suppose, difficult uh, for government is that the, the equation around financing these programs has become a lot more tricky because of the revenue fall off and you know the way the econo economy is going so there are going to be a lot of issues around how we sustain this multi-decade infrastructure program but what we can say I think from the report back of the PRCC is a lot is underway. Thank you. That's the second tech show for this week. Thank you for watching and join us again next time for more news analysis.